Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> This week on Tales of Tyria, we've got, uh, well, scant bit of news here and there, a scandal in Seattle, and a discussion on, well, a little bit of everything. Stay tuned. Here it comes. <laughs> Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria. Right here on the Sound Strategy Network, you can see us at talesoftyria.com. Glad you got a hold of the program, however you may have found it. Tell a friend or two about it, won't you? Let me just let you know, we are almost live from the, well... We're not there yet, and it's disappointing. <laughs> it's really, it's disappointing. I want to say we're almost live from the Rosewood Tavern in Lion's Arch, but we didn't get a beta invite. But that's okay. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. I'm not going to complain since I went on that Bridger rant last week about people complaining. That is me as well, Bridger, here, your host for this evening. Joining me as always, we have Vega. Welcome to the show. Hello. How's it going? No, not, we're not caring about the football, are we? I, I, you know what? I am upset that I'm missing the Madonna halftime show. I don't know about anyone else, but love Madonna. I did have somebody say, oh, it's going to fall on that. But what if there's a wardrobe malfunction with Madonna? I don't know. I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> also, also joining us, we have uh, Great. Welcome, sir. Hello there. So you're not, you're not caring either. Do you, do you have a choice on who's going to win this? Uh, not really. I'm not even watching it. It's. I know it's nine to three, and I don't know who's winning. I think maybe the Giants. <laughs> One of the two teams something. is. Obviously. One of the two teams is going to win. <laughs> Go, my favorite squadron! Beat the opponent soundly. Freelancer, are you a sports person? I am not. Me no, I, I'm not a uh, mainstream sports person. I enjoy like cross country and that kind of thing. <laughs> Midget so, tossing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> follow so, ESPN so from... eight the Ocho. Yeah, for me, it's like, what Super Bowl, you know? So, wait, well, wait, Super Bowls today? No. No, I don't, I don't too much care. So. Me neither. But uh, you know what? It's, if, out of all the sports out there, though, I find football has a, has a very good spectator element to it. I, I prefer, like, I, I don't know. I just think once, once you get into things like hockey and soccer oh, and, you, and, you watch, and you watch the ambition and just the raw – you know, emotion that goes into those sports overseas. Suddenly, football isn't as exciting anymore, and I know I'm going to have hate mail for that, but it's uh, <laughs> that's just the way I feel about it. I think hockey is a hell of a lot more exciting to watch than football. The Whalers There's left us! Fighting. There's fighting! The Whalers left us! Those sons of oh. bitches. I went to one game when I was a kid, and then they left. Stupid South Carolina hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... That having been said, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. It's a Guild Wars 2 podcast, so we're going to jump into all of the exciting Guild Wars 2 news and information that came out last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, actually, there Yay. is... Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Bridger, what exactly came out last week? Well, <laughs> there were a series of screenshots which are like movies but instead they're stills of movies <laughs> but we can we can really just impart what we think about those into audio format and then we have what you have here uh this here podcast so if you're watching uh the stream uh or if you're not watching the stream we'll have links to these in the show notes uh the first one that came out was a series of shots of a new pvp map that i believe is uh inspired by one of the Guild versus Guild maps in Guild Wars 1, as Malkior pointed out for us. You can see it's got a lot of fog kind of stuff going on in there, and uh, then it's got a blue base and a red base, obviously. I like, what did we have? Blue lions versus red dragons. That's kind of cool looking. And you've got uh, this sort of ambient fog that gives us this great atmosphere. And from the overview shot, it kind of looks like there's 
a control point right up here, and then there's probably another control point over here and another one over here, somewhere like that, and then the two bases go in between. So, uh, what do you guys think of this uh, new PvP map? I think it's, uh, I mean, it, it is very heavily based on the Guild Wars 1 map, but it's uh, it's nice. I mean, the, the big discussion that everybody has, obviously, is if you look at the fog in the middle area, um, whether that fog will have anything beyond aesthetic value. I don't think it will. I think we talked about this a while back, but, um, you know, I don't think it'll be it for anything other than to give it that creepy, you know, kind of um, haunting feeling down there. Uh, but, I mean, if you look at the, the overview, like what you got up right now, the, mm -hmm. the whole entire look of it, it actually looks pretty neat you know, how close those bases are, but yet you have to travel so far around. Yeah. And um, the I'm sure the paths are going to have a lot to do with this. I mean, whether you um, go around and, and I assume there's a flag in the middle, like the original um, of some sort. It, there's just a lot of strategy involved. I like it. It's unique. It's not your standard, you know... Um, Warsong Gulch, you know, base here, base here, big, big giant field in between. So yeah. it is a little different. <laughs> Not that you mention so, it, that was really the most lazy game, like, level design ever. What do you really want to do was, for yeah. this capture the flag map? Let's just put two bases, and then what do you want to put in between? Should we have this maze or some kind of, like, multi-tiered thing? Nope, just a, a field. field. <laughs> we could even have farmers or something in there. Just a big field. <laughs> what about fences? We could put fences. Nope. Just flat, just flat <laughs> land. I don't really want to do any work. <laughs> well, it's about the same as every other MMO that makes a similar map, but instead they put a river there because somehow the river makes it more important. Well, than you other know, they're just oh, copying yeah. Team so. Fortress. Two Fort, two Fort, <laughs> two Fort Five R yeah. was hey, the original. Yeah, but Two Fort was like the classic. You exactly. can't make a Two Fort. You got to have a Two Fort somewhere in there. So hopefully yeah. we'll have a river with bridges. You know. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, but but looking at this uh, this picture of the of the uh, with the fog of war and stuff, I mean, are there going to be trebuchets on this map? Because that's the only thing I could see no. the fog actually sort they, of. They I said doubt the it. trebuchets were were specifically the gimmick that you see on that particular map, the Battle of Kylo, and they're going to have other types of things that make the maps special and interesting. Like, I wonder if one of these maps can be like a night map. That would be interesting. A with night like map? areas How would that... of light and darkness. Like torches that need to be lit in order to see. I don't know. That'd be interesting. I would. Like, uh, and I know they bounced around this subject, but I would really like to see like weather changes and stuff. You know, like imagine sometimes you play this map and all of a sudden an epic electrical storm breaks out or something. You know, I think that I'd, I'd, I'd really, really, I'd really, gets like really to see strong. That in <laughs> well, yeah. Like world and, and you know this is arena net we're talking about i mean look at all the other footage they put out i'm sure they got some really neat things planned and i don't think we're going to see any generic you know two base giant field pvp maps they're all going to have something crazy associated with them so um, how many maps do you think they're going to be uh, let me re rephrase that how many maps would you be satisfied with for the competitive structured pvp mode uh depends first off how many modes there really are and but i would say for like the launch of the game, uh, six maps, um, I would be satisfied. I mean, it, it takes time to actually break down each map and get to know the maps on a on a level that I'm going to be playing them at. So, you're gonna, I'm gonna be grinding out 500 times on one level before I move on to the next, and vice versa. I mean, that's just me. But for the average player, the casual player, I think they're gonna want to see more, especially if that's the only PvP um, mode. At launch, you know, they're going to want variety. And if you can only do structured PvP and, and it's only, let's say, capture the flag esque or capture point esque, um, they're going to want more variety than that. Definitely. I can see that. What do you think, great? Give me a number. What's, what's the number that you would be like, this is the minimum number for me to be happy if they launch with this? Um, I'm probably going to fall on the like, casual side that uh, Freelancer just spelled that. I really don't <laughs> care how many, like, the, a lot more would be cool. But at the same time, they have to be good. Like, I still think Kylo is a bit gimmicky with the, you know, you know, I've already said this before with the trebuchet and stuff. But I like to see maps that are, like, fleshed out. So probably a good, like, three or four solid maps that are, like, they're, everything works in them. And they're just, like, they're all memorable. And they don't have any, like, crazy gimmicks going on. Because, see, here's the problem with the, the gimmicky maps. When it comes to tournaments and stuff, especially the um, third-party tournaments, the ones that are done by big companies like EA and such, and they're 
twenty thousand dollar prize pools, they're gonna immediately pick and choose certain maps to pull out of the map pool. So it doesn't matter if you have Yeah, if the competitive you know, community what, decides this is too yeah. random like an electrical storm that just randomly kills people. <laughs> well, coming coming from uh, coming from to Team Liquid, StarCraft Two, and that that particular scene, if you look at map editors there and the way they develop uh, maps that are used in tournaments, there you got two things always associated. One, they're perfectly symmetrical. It's mm -hmm. not always the most exciting thing, but that's you know ground rule number one. That the point that I leave my base to go and get that flag and come back is exactly the same with the exact same obstacles yeah. as mm -hmm. you know what the other enemy would do. And I don't see that in stuff like Battle of Kylo. And so it's one of those things that if um, you get certain tournament organizers involved, I think they're Battle gonna, of Kylo is. Symmetrical. It's got it, it's got it, some variations in it that it's going to make it a lot different. Mm -hmm. And um, it's. Yeah, I mean, as far as a layout, it's symmetrical for the most part. But if you look, if you actually look at the mini map and the way that they get up the to the clock teams, tower seems to be exactly this. the way the two teams exit their base, the way they actually enter the clock tower, there mm -hmm. are slight variations, and even that one second variation of the red team having to walk around an obstacle versus the blue team walking straight to it um, is going to you're going to have you know competitive teams up in arms that you know one side's you know favored over the other and the same mm -hmm. as starcraft 2 is if it takes me uh to get to a let's say a zelnaga tower which is a scouting tower if it takes me not even a half second longer to move a worker of mine over to that tower then that map's immediately canceled out from the tournament pool so it's it's one of those things that i think if they don't get any symmetrical maps and that and that's the hard part you know, you, you can't make a symmetrical map and then also make it look perfectly pretty. It's very hard. So Definitely. So, <clears throat> great. Uh, Vega. Yep. Do you think they're going to give us map editing tools like Team Fortress does? Or like Ooh. any other FPS? Because that would be very interesting. Um, I, I mean, you know, it's hard to say because, I mean, many other MMOs don't really kind of give you those options, but they're sort of taking a whole different root in terms of you Maybe know how they want to do maps? that would be a really interesting thing you've never seen an mmo before yeah i mean i think it's i think it's something doable for them considering how they're they, they're structuring their pvp and that you know they sort of have the um you know the games that you join it's not it's, you, it's servers you play the main game hosted and by get, private individuals yeah so i i think in that sense it i think it's doable um it, i don't think it's we're, Either. They would have talked. I about think. It, I so. think that'd be really cool, though, because that I think would definitely give the whole competitive scene a whole tool now to make their own balanced maps that are completely symmetrical, and then you know, Arena Net could go ahead and make the their fun, crazy maps that you know they're maybe they're not balanced for PvP, but for the casual player, they're more fun and more. And then you have a tournament <laughs> tournament version of the same map where the general layout's all the same, but you you tweak those little things like what Freelancer was talking about, so that the timing is exactly the same for everybody. Yeah, yeah. that would be very but interesting. I, I think that's a really great idea. Um, I mean, they haven't said anything about it, but you should think about it, Gil Arena. Net. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, there 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 is the other phenomenon that Valve pointed out. You know, if you if you re watch the um, the developer commentary of Team Fortress Two, which is just amazing. So is the Left 4 Dead one. So is the Portal one, yeah, and the Half Life yeah. one. It's all amazing. But if you watch the TF Two one specifically, they talk about how they notice the trend in many of the online FPS games is the fact that very few maps get chosen to be played over and over and over again. The community favorites, and it's just like you just play De Dust over and over and over and over again 600 times out of the 601 times that you played the game 600 of them are on de dust so they actually tried to solve that problem by making hydro which had its own problems unfortunately but i like the idea of where they were going with that so it's possible that the game may only ship with like three or four of these structured pvp maps and they'll add more as we go and if that's the case that's an okay number for me as long as each of them is worth playing like if we decide okay these are the only two that we're going to play we only want to play on Dust Bowl and Gold Rush and screw all the other ones, then, you know, it doesn't matter how many maps you release if only two of them get played all the time. I hope that we get some high-quality stuff. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, there's another couple of images here. That was the first set, and then I believe this one was the second set, so let's jump over to that here. Uh, this one showed off uh, some Norn... 
a Norn in the Scholar armor in the Battle of Kylo map. A trebuchet falls in the background. And then this one is, it says, if I recall correctly, let me read the, uh, the text here. It says, in the PvP lobby, which my understanding is it's some kind of a three-dimensional version of a lobby, which is kind of interesting. But this is the image that spawned uh, a thousand threads, <laughs> I Here guess we, we could say. <laughs> um, so, but before we get back to that, um, let's, let's go over the last of these images that we have here, just to you know, take a look at them, see what the thoughts are on these. Um, <clears throat> here we've got a very interesting Asura with what looks like dreadlocks. I didn't know you could have that, but apparently you can. Um, I believe that's a warrior going up against a guardian, if I'm not mistaken. Here's a human warrior um, showing off in the Battle of Kylo, I believe, because they said there was something about trebuchets there. Hunter versus, I think, Mesmer or Elementalist there. Um, why does that look like a goblin? Like, can you have green Asura? That's weird. <laughs> The character uh, yeah. it has pretty scales like it. on it or something. This is, it this is what sparks the conversation that there is a limit. There should be a limit to the sliders on your And your I know there is going to be. <laughs> My understanding is they're using the Aeon technology for character creation, which if you ever played Aeon, lets oh, you God. do anything. But they specifically said that they were going to put more restrictions on it than Aeon did. So, somebody says it looks like Yoda. <laughs> it's it like Yoda with like a, a bow from Skyrim or something. That's ridiculous. I like that bow. Very cool looking. And here we have, I think, uh, I don't know, is that a Mesmer and a Warrior maybe? No, that's probably the same Hunter guy. He's just in blue now. And then uh, here we go. That looks like a Warrior and uh, somebody about to get killed by a Warrior. <laughs> that might be a thief. <laughs> I'm not looking at the actual text here. What was that last one there? Was uh, a human thief and a char warrior. Okay, there we go. I'm not. That's not bad. And then we've got uh, this one, engineer mines. That's kind of cool. If it would ever load. <clears throat> there we go. More dreads. More dreads. Yep, yep. And then human ranger. You can see him over there. It looks like versus human warrior. I think. And let's see if we have any more. Oh, there's. I think. Is that a human engineer spraying him with something there? That might be what that is. I gotta find out. That is a human ranger versus a Char, Mesmer, and a Norn engineer. Yep, yep, there we go. So, those are some pretty cool looking shots. But, um, <clears throat> I guess that brings us right back to the scandal in Seattle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I read quite a few threads. Title? I read a I read a whole Reddit the like two hundred replies or something and then there's the uh, the Guild Wars Insider portrayal of this issue instead of Maxim it's got Minim <laughs> the Maximum <laughs> Protection issue I like this uh, let me just put a focus on this in case you didn't see it that's a pretty uh, clever cover the Guild Wars Insider folks are usually pretty good at making uh, some very insightful posts and this one was no different. Um, I believe this is Seven as well, writing an editorial um, that, uh, you, know, you know, that's weird. He doesn't, it doesn't show who wrote it. I think Seven writes everything on the website here, though, so we'll just go with that. <clears throat> and uh, they basically, this sort of discussion popped up everywhere going, wait a minute, that's not really going to protect your midriff at all, is it? I could just chop from the side. <laughs> and then, oh, but it's okay, because it doesn't go all the way through you, because there's armor there. So, yeah, there's that. So, uh, for this, we actually go uh, live to our um, live in the past. This actually is costing a considerable amount of money here. We have to go live in the past to our senior female correspondent, Kai Dream. Kai, what are your thoughts on the issue? I think that everyone knows that sex sells in an MMO and that generally young boys play these games and like Guild Wars Inside have actually said in their article that you need to kill two birds with one stone and if you want to make money you need to make something that looks good and also have something where women are dressed in small clothing to make people interested and think oh that NPC is hot and things like that. Um, personally as a girl I'm not bothered by it because I typically want to look good as a character and I like gear that looks good and I can customize and I think it looks hot when I'm walking around. I want to look cool and hot and people think that my character looks really interesting and things like that. So 
the less armor personally I like, and I think it's funny when other people wear really skimpy armor as well, and they're boys and things like that, but um, all armor types, as long as it looks epic, I'm not really fussed by it. And I think people are over-exaggerating and worrying too much about what things look like rather than kind of the gear itself, and yeah. Yeah, especially with transmutation stones in the game, how anybody can have anything they want uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, so I've actually heard that a couple other times. Did you have uh, any other conversations with any other um, women that you know that about this topic in the last week or so? Did they share sort of the same feeling of, yeah, well, I, I like looking like this or I like the options? I haven't typically about Guild Wars 2, but I have had the conversation in the past when Rift introduced the um, kind of costume feature where you could put any slot of gear into kind of your costume panel so you would have your epic gear underneath but you would look completely different and everyone kind of went out and farmed the skimpiest bits of gear possible mm. and we dyed it crazy colors so we walked around completely unrealistic and then you'd get some girls who were like oh you're dressing your character up to be you know like some sort of prostitute and then other people wanted to have like big bulky armor so I think no matter whether it's male or female, people will always argue that if you dress skimpy, you must be some sort of, you know, procrastinator in real life. But um, I think it all depends on the person. I typically like to be in the fantasy world and I make my character look completely opposite to what I look like and be really outrageous. So, and I that as well and aren't bothered about the whole sexism feminist side of skimpy gear. I don't think they think that much into it. So you don't consider it, uh, let's, let's take Guild Wars 2's as an example. Do you consider it, a lot of people are calling it objectification? Um, I do see what they mean by making women like a sex symbol, but I think that's what fantasy women are always anyway. When you think of like Lord of the Rings example, all of like the female elves are really pretty and it's like that you wouldn't really kind of, have an NPC that's really ugly, like, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem fantasy or, you know, something that's mythological or really nice to look at. That's how I see MMOs and how I see, like, NPCs or female characters in MMOs. And you want them to be pretty and you wouldn't typically go out of your way to make, like, an ugly female character. So I think to have matching gear kind of goes with that. I don't think it's making them, like, objects. I just think it's it naturally goes with like the story and how that they should look. I mean, if you look at like Xena warrior princess, like back in the day, she wore like the tiniest armor ever and she was a gladiator. And I think that kind of goes with it. Like that's kind of the gender roles in MMOs. All right. Well, thank you for joining us all the way in the past. Uh, yeah. we are expending a tremendous amount of resources. How much does this cost? <laughs> 30 billion for the time machine. How much for the plutonium? <laughs> okay, so it looks like about $35 billion, uh, to get this <laughs> particular time machine working. But thank you very much for joining us. Back thank to you me. in the studio, me. Bye. Thanks, me. Uh, good to hear from Kai there. Uh, that was uh, extraordinarily expensive. All the donations that you gave us, just that time machine was a one-time <laughs> use. We're never going to get it to happen again, so we need more donation money to get the time machine rebuilt. It uses plutonium like you wouldn't believe. Um, anyway, <clears throat> but not the uh, not the depleted kind, the the enriched kind. Um, just in case anybody wants to donate that, you can send it to oh, not Lord, a real address. The, here comes the FBI. FBI, <laughs> 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 oh god, they're they're monitoring all traffic. All right, so that's uh, that's Kai's thoughts. Um, it's a very interesting topic. A lot of people are pointing out some very important things. I think some people are pointing out, okay, Guild Wars 1, the way that that worked and the way that Guild Wars 2 probably will continue to work based on the armors that we've seen is that heavy armor always pretty much covered everything. It looked like heavy armor. The medium armor might have been more like leather, like tight-fitting leather kind of stuff. And then the light armor that the scholars wear or the light classes like the Mesmer and the Elementalist, well, they're wearing cloth armor anyway. It doesn't protect you. So what does it matter if it's a shirt or a half a shirt? It's still not going to stop a sword from going through it because it's cloth. So that's what's, that, that's, that's a, a couple of different points. Um, another point is that in Guild Wars 1, the men also had sort of skimpy, scantily clad, like Gladiator 300 style armor that they could choose from in, in, as well. And uh, that way, everything's even. I don't know. What, what do you think, Vega? Does that make it okay if they equally uh, 
spread around the scantily cladness. I, that's a I whenever whenever this whole argument comes up, I can't help but not take it seriously because um, my sister runs a website called Autostraddle um, that deals with. Um, <laughs> I, cer- um, certain, <laughs> I'm sorry, that name. It's a. It, the funny thing is, it's a lesbian website. I don't know why she came up with the name Autostraddle, but they had a whole gaming section about <laughs> MMOs and the female characters. And one of the persons was arguing about, I want to make an ugly night elf. A fat, ugly night elf, but I can't do it because the game won't let me. And then I was just thinking, like, you know, that's what you're going to complain about because you can't, you can't make a fat elf, a fat, ugly elf. That's your big complaint. Um, I mean, I like how Guild Wars, they kind of, with the armors, they make them look how they should look. Like, if you're, full, if you're heavy armor, you have heavy armor. If you're cloth armor, like you said, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. A piece of cotton isn't going to protect you whether it's there or not. Um, but I don't know. I think the whole argument is kind of silly. It's a game. You're there to sort of make an alternate character. What, what do you care that you look scantily clad or whatever? But that's just, it's, I think it's just silly. The only, the only sort of complaint that I've ever had in this sort of arena has been if your character, and this is almost always the case, in these kinds of games, your character levels up and you get to wear heavier armor. And there was a fantastic comic about this, and I'll see if I can find it somewhere. I'm not sure if it's still in my folders, but you level up and, okay, you no longer wear leather armor. Instead, now you're wearing chainmail armor. And on the female characters, it just meant less of your body was covered, but the (laughs) armor value was doubled. So it's like, this is way more defense. And then in the comic, the guy, like, tries to, you know, like, no way. That's not double. She's like, it's double. And he's like, I don't believe you. And he tries to stab her exposed belly with a, with a, with a blade, and it just sort of breaks in half. And he's like, oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> so that's, that's always been my complaint. If, it's, if, it, if you have something that sort of breaks the immersion, you're just going, okay, so this person is a warrior with super heavy armor that I can't possibly get through. But I can see her thigh, like six, seven, ten inches of it. How could I possibly miss that every time I hit? Um, that's that's what breaks it for me. But it seems like Guild Wars Two has the progression, like Guild Wars One did, correctly in that these stylized, pretty-looking armors are on the scholar classes. Um, Freelancer, your thoughts? You know, Tara had. I don't know if anybody checked out the thread on Guru, but it, it, it's easy to point Tara, blame. You mean boobs, the MM. <laughs> I mean, it's it's easy to point blame at Guild Wars 2 for things like this, because what else do we have to talk about? I mean, it's it just seems like the perfect moment to try to bring up controversy, because what else are we going to bring up controversy about? There's no new information. We can't complain about World versus World, because we didn't get that info. Um, you know, it... I couldn't I couldn't make a male blood elf in WoW, and you didn't see me complaining. You know, it's... <laughs> and for those who don't know what I'm talking about, all the blood elves look the same. So <laughs> it's uh it's silly. I mean, ever since the days of EverQuest, Asheron's Call, whatever I don't know how old the audience is, but if you played MMO since the beginning, nothing has changed. It is a fantasy world where you're go where it's appealing towards male gamers. Okay. Yes, there are female gamers. Yes, we love you, but it is, I mean, it's just marketing. It's simple economics. You, you want to appease your mass audience, and the mass audience is male gamers. I don't care what kind of crazy statistic you throw at me. Nine out of ten of your guild members are males or more. So and you're saying, you're saying you don't just, fault the people that are making the game because they're just playing to the existing demographic. They are, they're a they are making a paycheck. Okay, and, and nobody should confuse that with this grandeur idea that they're trying to make you know the holy grail they have to make money and that that also unfortunately includes their marketing team which says probably i know one of the marketing guys are probably laughing right now or if you're in that you know one of the guys says she needs less armor (laughs) (laughs) i'm sure of it and it's uh until you get down to actual marketing and stuff you never truly understand it but look here's the bottom line if you're if you're gonna make a game or if you're gonna do anything and you want to sell your product because Guild Wars 2 is a product, do not let anybody fool you on that. You want to appeal to your audience. Guys do not want to see in general 
fully, you know, double layer iron armor on their females. Boobies. <laughs> Thanks for taking I mean, the whole <laughs> argument and the whole discussion down to barbarian so, level. I mean, we were having this, a nice high-minded conversation here about business versus ethics versus <laughs> right. You know, what's good about what, what's, what can improve our culture. And Freelancer was arguing the, well, it's a business and they have a fiduciary responsibility to their stockholders and this and that. And I was going to come back with, you know, but as at the same time, they ha it's a piece of art and art represents our culture and they could probably do a little bit more to represent that and then we just have <laughs> vega boobies. come in here to tell us all about it. it's all about the boobies man so you know what it what it comes down to also is that this is americans for the most part bringing this topic up i don't know if you guys do any research on sex in america but we've developed our culture around it so unfortunately we're a victim to it so stop the complaining it's going to happen you can point blame at guild wars 2 because you don't have anything else to do about you know but there's not a game company or product out there that doesn't do the same thing and if you know if that's your thing to complain about it then so be it but I mean, if people are going to troll each other, and that's all this is. It's, it's a giant troll thread because they don't have anything else to argue about. That's, that's probably true. If we actually had, you know, people able to play the beta, this thread would have been long gone, and there would have been six <laughs> threads about how the warrior's overpowered, ten threads about how the mesmer's overpowered, and, you know, every other class have its own separate set of threads. And you'd be like, every single forum, the warrior's overpowered because of the bow. The warrior's overpowered because of the longsword. The warrior's overpowered because of the hammer. And every other one has the same thing. You know that's what would happen. This thing wouldn't even be a drop in the bucket compared to that. But at the no, same time... I think in some ways it does have merit. Uh, great, we didn't get your thoughts on this. What do you think? Well, are, you, are you with Freelancer? This is just a business. It's all strictly I business, it, guys. It goes it's just way a business. Be, it goes way beyond business. It's just the way things are. And that, that sounds really like, oh, matter of fact, I'm like, oh, whatever. You know, blah, blah. But it's, it's seriously, like, this is how not just MMOs, but like all video games are in a, a lot of ways. Like, the only game I can think that when I was, went away from this in a way is like Skyrim. And very little, not even totally away from it. Mm -hmm. But especially not if you download that mod. And it goes beyond just like marketing. <laughs> it, it's like society, and it's it's a, it's a very complex issue. Guild Wars Two is not going to solve it in any form or way. And freelancers write it; they're just trolling because there's nothing else to do. You know, you brought up Skyrim, but guess what the number one mod for Skyrim is right now? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know. I don't even have to say it. But then that's yeah. not the game developers. I mean, those guys aren't. Those are the people who buy Those the game. Those are people that are doing this it. Is, That's a work this is of a passion. Mod. <laughs> this is a mod that has been downloaded more than the DLC has been bought. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it's, it's just bad all around. It's a fantasy game, people. Chill out. I mean, come on. So I mean, the, uh, the, part of the way I kind of look at it is when we were talking about, um, as a developer, who do you listen to when you're you know, like patching games or when someone says that this is overpowered? You listen to the majority. You don't listen to the few people that are pissed off about the way the game is, you know? All and right. just because a few people wish that the female had a little bit more armor doesn't mean you go and change the whole game for them. Somebody in the chat room actually needs us to point out the file that we're talking about. I will just go here to the top 100. Top 100 most endorsed adult files. Copy, link, and paste. And they can That's have a, they can have a look. They can have a look, and we'll just move on with the conversation. So um, <clears throat> uh, this is a very interesting thing, and, and I, I agree with you, Freelancer, in, in the idea that this is, this is a business decision, and they have to do what will sell the game. And everybody knows that sex sells. And everybody knows that the vast majority of, of, of um, you know, MMO gamers are you know, 14 to 25-year-old guys. That's just, that's just the way it is. Now, at the same time, as I was reading through the Reddit uh, post and this of course could be entirely misleading because it is reddit but I, there were a couple of people that said I'm a woman and and they were not necessarily opposed to it and in that um, Guild Wars Insider article the uh, the author also talks about how he talked to a couple of his woman friends and they also said you know I'm not opposed to it I want to look good in these games and this, you know, having some really good stylish armor that makes me, you know, look good. I'd rather that than be covered up in all this bulky armor. Because let's face it, one of the one of one of 
male's power fantasies is to look like a giant hulking badass, right? You want, you know, a lot of guys, that's like the, want, the way they want their character to look. They want to look like the Hulk decked out in like evil Daedric armor with a massive mace ready to slam somebody to the ground, right? That's, that's the way a lot of guys kind of want to look if they have a male character. Females don't necessarily have that power fantasy. So that is something that turns them off if their character is fully clothed. So, I'm obviously speaking in complete broad generalizations here. Please, nobody take this and just say, NOT EVERY WOMAN THINKS THAT WAY! I understand. I understand. I'm just trying to point out there are multiple <laughs> points of view here from both sexes, which makes it a very, very touchy subject. Um, however, I'm just going to leave us here with a quote from my wife. When I asked her about this, because I thought, you know, okay, let me get, you know, a couple of first-hand thoughts from women. What do you think about this topic? She said, I don't care. I'm going to play tree people anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take that as a no comment. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. So, so let me ask you, Bridger. All right. Guys who insist on playing female characters, every guy is to the most ex uh, to, has different reasons for doing so especially those that have like a full roster of all female guild wars or let's say night elf rogues whatever it might be why do you think guys roll female characters we're talking you know rel guys that probably have wives girlfriends but they they insist on rolling a female what do you think that's all about well as someone who's never done it before, <laughs> I couldn't quite do that. But I think the, the main thing is because, you know, it, the, the character creation, to some extent, is, is guys like to, you know, say, oh, man, what do you, you know, if, if you're in a bar and you're just like, all right, man, redheads are brunettes. Oh, definitely redheads. You know, do you like, like this or like that? Or, you know, they like to say, okay, this is what I like, right? They used to have those conversations all the time. From what I understand, I mean, I'm not one of those guys. I never go to bars, but I'm just, this is what I've understood from pop culture. Um, and uh, thank you. So to me, I think that character creator is like, I want to create the aesthetically, you know, most beautiful woman that I have. That way, when I'm in the game, I can see her all the time. That seems to be pretty simple uh, to me. The uh, I I've never made a female. Actually, no, I did make one female character in Guild Wars, and it was a warrior. Um, but someone quoted once that I forget who it was. It was from some podcast. If if I'm gonna stare at something for hours and hours and hours on end, I'd rather stare at a nice girl's butt as opposed to <laughs> a hulking ogre's butt. That's that's and kind that of that's, that. though. That's why that's like, they made. <laughs> The person I feel who started that, like, quote, I, I feel like they just didn't want to admit that they find girls prettier. I, I don't know if that sounds right. Like, for some reason, female avatars look better in some cases. Well, and just look at, the, look at the male night elves and look at the male blood elves. They all look like, uh, like, like, uh, elves. They, they all look like females anyway. Yeah. So you might as well roll a female for the better voices and <laughs> the better <laughs> the other thing it's... and the, the only other thing that reason that i could think of is i for, for some reason in my head and this may be video games fault it may be society's fault or it may just be inborn built into me via natural causes whatever instincts but when i think male i think power and massive slow swing sort of warrior style but when i think like finesse in combat when i think of like you know a thief st style combat of bouncing in and out slashing with a dagger going back and doing like jumping flipping moves i think female that's just what i what makes more sense to me because you know when i think gymnastic style combat you know that kind of combat just seems can, like it works see better with, rolling it already you know <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just what I've been trained to think, I guess, by all gaming. Always. It's not that you've been trained. Dexterity is like, female and strength is male. That's what I've always known. It's like your preferences. That's just how you you want to you want your characters to be. Like you say, if I'm going to be playing this character, in my mind, it makes sense for me to have it like this. And yeah, you can be brainwashed or whatever society tells you to do this, but it's what you decide to do. It's what you like. So. This sort of is it brings us into and, and and before we we finish, I I'd like to suggest that at the very least, comparing Guild Wars two to a lot of the other options out there, 
I have to say that I'm very happy to see what the heck is that noise? I gotta figure that out. So, I'm very happy to see. <laughs> it sounds like Skype, but it's not. So, I'm very happy to see that they are not simply making skimpy armor for the females. They're not making basically all of the armor skimpy, and they're not. They're not just like half-assing it and saying, "Yeah, the marketing to to departments told us to do this." They kind of said, "You know what? We have a responsibility to as as artists to creating culture that millions of people are going to be viewing to sort of portray it." in a way that's fair to the sexes. We don't want it to be sexist. So, you know, I'll just leave this right here. Let me see if I've got the right uh, image. We'll end it with this because this sort of gives us the overview of how, uh, you know, how, how ArenaNet sees it. You've got skimpy male armor, skimpy female armor, and entirely not skimpy male and female armor. Those are all options that are available to the players. And as long as you've got transmutation stones and you can make anything you want be, have any stats that you want, I think, uh, at least within the, the armor classes, obviously, I think that is, uh, that's, that's one up that ArenaNet has on basically every other MMO maker, because almost all of them don't include necessarily a, at least this is my, my guess, um, you know, skimpy male armor, for example, or scaling so that the armor becomes less skimpy the heavier it is. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway. I think that dovetails relatively well into uh, a discussion on um, women in gaming. This is one we had uh, from the mailbag at one point. Somebody was asking us um, common preconceptions of girl gamers, what we might feel is right and wrong. Um, so this is a very interesting topic, and it you see it m come up more, you know, in MMOs because there are, I think, more women in MMOs than there are in like games like first-person shooters or RTS games or things like that. I don't know, Vega. Do you find that to be the case? Um, it's I I think generally yes, but I think part of the reason why you come across more females in MMOs is because naturally you're playing with a bigger group. Like in in first-person shooters like Team Fortress and Call of Duty and all that stuff, you know, you're teamed up with maybe like ten other people or playing against 10 other people, 15 other people. But in MMOs, you know, there's hundreds of people around, so you're naturally around a bigger group, so you're going to come across more females. But I think it's also the case that, um, I guess that sort of the MMO genre just pulls a bigger audience, and I think that there's more girls that are into the fantasy and role-playing than they are into being Navy SEALs and shooting shit. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that's why. I think you're right. I think that just comes down to different male and female power fantasies, essentially. Uh, things yeah. that that we want to sort of immerse ourselves into. Guys love being Solid Snake. They love being Sam Fisher. You know, those those are the things that we'd love to be able to do, like in real life. Like we want to be that badass, and <clears throat> that's not necessarily what you know a lot of women necessarily want to do, but. MMOs, maybe they're just more visible there because in a lot of FPSs, you have no idea unless you hear their voice. There's no such thing as girls on the internet. Just, <laughs> just like, well, I guess one like of us Miles had to say there. it. No, but uh, you ever, uh, I don't know, in my experience, I, I've played, oh God, a lot of MMOs, and it always seems to me like um, the psychology of most women, most being keyword there, um, they play either a healer class, and they just play because they enjoy socializing. They actually play mm -hmm. MMOs for the original reason they were created. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> They're I mean, better gamers. That, no. Right? Um, and it's uh, God, like I know, like in my own guild now, I have like seven women. They all come from a healer background, and uh, you know why is that? I I don't know. Maybe it's that. Uh, of course, I do not have the credentials to say this, but maybe it's that motherly instinct, like they like to take care of their friends um, or take care of their guild. Uh, it could be any number of things. I also find that women make for some of the best guild leaders I've ever met. And I think builders in general, they, they're able to take in a lot more information at the same time. Whereas all of us guys, you know, leading guilds and playing rogues, warriors, and all these really competitive type classes, uh, for the most part, it's uh, you know it's very direct. We know exactly. All right, I need to do DPS, 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 DPS. Whereas uh, in 
like a healer perspective, anybody that's played a healer knows this. It's so multi, you know, you have so much going on at the same time. And not a lot of good healers, uh, or not a lot of players can be a good healer in that respect. They can't focus on an entire raid of 50 people. So uh, it's, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it just naturally divides down that way. But um, I, I hope Guild Wars 2, with all the aesthetic properties and uh, and the fact that they're really pushing the social aspect... I think as we progress more and more, the whole karma of girls, you know, ooh, that's video games, that's that's a boy thing, you know, I think that's going to slowly go away as society progresses, so hopefully with Guild Wars 2 more so than others. Agreed. Oh, I found the sound. Pigeon, go away. There it is. <clears throat> so, I, I agree with you on that, and actually, I mean, there's there's a lot of interesting nature versus nurture debates, but there are pretty clearly some some instincts i guess you could say that that males and females generally differ on not all males are one way and not all females are the other way obviously but obviously, there are some yeah. general uh differences between males and females i mean there are some very well documented studies about how males are better at traveling and directing themselves by was it distance and direction and females are better by uh landmarks something to that effect um, so when you blindfold women and men, men can get around better than women, but when you uh, prevent men from determining how far they've gone, then women can figure out where they are much easier. Like they've done a lot of really interesting studies that show how the male and female brains differ. And they think that when you're in the womb and the hormones that are produced sort of give you slightly different viewpoints on things. And I think that might sort of lead women and men to have different roles that they desire, again, in general in games like this. And I agree with you that the socialization is really interesting. One of the theories of uh, evolutionary psychology is that um, men had to have really good 3D spatial understanding. That's why men in general in these studies have better 3D spatial understanding because they were the hunters of the group and they had to be able to visualize where prey is, where it's moving to, how to intercept it, etc. Uh, in, on the savannah and things like that. Whereas women were often the ones left at the camp while the men went out on hunting parties and as a result they had challenges that involved social tasks. So they are better than men at reading social cues amongst other people. So if you try to have have a guy figure out, you know, what emotions are going on in a series of images, they will not nearly score as well as women. And so when it comes to socialization, I think in the same sense that you were just talking about freelancer, women can make better guild leaders in that sense if they are able to pick up on, as a general rule, again, more readily, those different cues of, oh, this person's upset and why they're upset about decision X or whatever, whereas maybe a male wouldn't have noticed because... You know, bro, man, we're just, we don't talk about our feelings. <laughs> you know, that kind of culture can probably hurt us too. Um, but it's all, it's all very interesting. I know there, there's that stigma too about being a woman. All women suck at games, blah, 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 blah. I mean, have you guys heard that a lot? Angie gets that all the time, unfortunately, my wife. It's not so much actually women for that matter. It's actually the people who play games. It's not women at all. No, I know. That's what I'm saying, though. But the yeah. people you, you find out wind up with, you know, just complete a-holes all the time. Especially, I mean, that's why she stopped playing TF2, because whenever she would get into a server, if somebody heard her voice, then any time that she died, they would just be like, oh, oh yeah, just like a great fail girl, ha, ha, ha. Like, they just use that as an excuse. And it's so retarded, because if they hadn't heard her voice, they wouldn't have said shit, you know? So yeah. there's, all, there's all that kind of stuff happening. It looks like we lost Freelancer, unfortunately. He's going to try to get back to us, perhaps. Oh. Um, so, <clears throat> any final comments on this, or should we move on? I guess we could move on. Yeah, we can go. The only thing, the only thing I'm surprised that I've never heard about before is people complaining that there are no female classes in TF2. That's interesting, yeah. They're definitely, and, and I know, everybody knows, the pyro is totally going to be... A girl. That, that, that's been that's, since that's the been game awesome. came out. Everyone's like, Pyro's got to be a girl. Got to be. <laughs> got to be. I just and meet the Pyro. They're keeping it for too damn long. And meet the medic was so amazing. Yep. Stay strong. Stay strong. We'll get the Pyro eventually. <laughs> Stay on track. Stay on target. Focus. Stay on target. So Focus. we Luke had computer. another email come in from Axe GG. Axe G. -G 
uh, who said, I saw this topic on a forum and I thought it would be good to hear your opinion. Do we want uh, an inspect function in the game so that uh, we can see other people's gear, for example? If so, what should, we sh- what should it cover? What should we be able to inspect? Stats, gear, personal story, traits? Uh, and should we be able to see another player's build in PvP, for instance? Now, that's a very interesting question. Uh, freelancer, very easy... Uh, question do you think that if you go into a structured pvp match for example and you look at the scoreboard should you see the class of the other players there absolutely okay but i also but if i'm going into a structured pvp i pretty much already know the class of my enemy so (laughs) it's uh i mean if i'm heading into a tournament setting you know it's oh sure but let's say pug format you're just you're just uh, out to practice and play does it really matter then i mean (laughs) It's, I mean, no, I'm, I, I'm, let me be nice here. It's does it? Should you see your other classes? Yeah, why not? I mean, what difference is it going to make? Because we know that all classes can pretty much fill all roles, so it's not like you can immediately say, "Oh, they have four healers, so we need four healers." Because you never know. You know, most classes can pretty much handle their own. But that's true. So knowing what class is kind of moot at this point, isn't it? But that, that's tier one, right? I guess you're going to get at tier two. Yeah. The next should, question is okay. Yeah. So if we're allowed to know what class. Would you should we be able to see theoretically like what uh, what weapon sets they have equipped? Uh, well, physically you'll be able to look at them and yeah, tell, right? Yeah. So, and I don't think you equip weapon sets in the idea that you can only bring certain and not have others. Am I right in saying that? I believe so. Well, when so, you you can only have for most classes only have two equipped at any given moment. But my current guess slash understanding is that you're going to be able to switch them out on death. So if you're, you know, going with a, a longbow and a longsword, a greatsword as a ranger, you could switch out to, uh, I don't know, a shortbow and something else, you know, shortbow and, and sword and shield or something like that or whatever the ranger gets. I don't have it memorized yet. So um, don't hit on me. <clears throat> so to me, I don't think you need anything more than that in PvP. I, I think it's one of those things, I mean, whether you play Aeon, Warhammer, while wow. any of those games right now, you all know what an armory is, and you all know how to look up in a, any any player character and pull up their information on the fly. Has it ever been complained about? No, because I mean, there's not really much to complain about. Even if you knew when you got into that match what that person's wearing, what can you really do about it? I mean, at that moment, you have to concentrate on other things. And if they took the inspect function out. It's not like people won't just go to those websites, alt tab, or hop on their other monitor and just look it up there. So, it, it it's crafty and nifty to put it in game, but it's not going to really make any difference. Those that want to check will check one way or another, and those that don't don't care. So, it's almost like uh, let me let me ask you this, Vega. In in some of these competitive FPS games like Counter Strike, or even some like StarCraft, things like that, I've heard that the players in some of these instances would complain when those matches were broadcast because they'd give away the secret that the player was going to be using or the team was going to be using. Oh, they're using a new thing. Giving away the secret. So in the tournament setting, the next person they go up against knows their, their special tactic or strategy or something like that. Do you, what do you think about those complaints? Do they belong in an eSport? Um, no, because... It's an esport. If you are partaking in an esport, you are in a, a sport that is being spectated that people are going to watch. And the only way that people are going to watch it is what you're doing and what the other person is doing and, you know, seeing those things. You can't just have both screens blank until they, everyone meets in the middle and they have a big fight and then say, oh, look at our fight here. You know, that the whole point of, especially in games like StarCraft, is to see the person's strategy and see what they're doing in the beginning and their builds and everything like that. Um, so, I mean, for someone to complain that, you know, oh, I don't want what I'm doing being broadcast because they're going to steal my strategies. Well, then don't be a programmer and don't play esports because if you want to be spectated and be part of the esport, that's part of the trade-off. Yep, and I, I think... You can play head games with that too. I mean, imagine having more than one, you know, major strategy that, that, well, I mean, that your that entire happens. team could come at it with one particular set of strategies and then everybody's expecting that and then you completely switch it around. I'm pretty sure that happens in the LOL tournaments all the time. 
Well, people do that in StarCraft all the time when they'll, you know, they're, when someone's getting scouted, they'll throw down a building so that the person sees that they're building whatever building it is. And immediately a pro gamer is going to know that while well, he's having his Saibo at whatever time, he's going to be going this. And then the person cancels that when the scout's gone and they go and expand or something. And it completely throws the other person off. So you definitely can use it to your own advantages. There's a big problem in competitive gaming as well, um, which has pretty much been fixed. You saw this immediate wave of uh, different ways to fix it from Justin TV or now Twitch TV and owned and League of Legends and StarCraft. And the problem was called ghosting, where certain mm -hmm. players, um, and it got really bad at a certain point a few months ago, and um, well, for the la over the last year, uh, where pro gamers and, and you know, uh, top-level players would actually click on streams and view other players' streams as they were facing them and therefore pick apart their build or what they were changing in their build. Because most pro gamers, especially in StarCraft, it's not a matter of knowing the opponent's strategy. You, it, It's a matter of reaction. It's a matter of being able to react and control your opponent to force them to do what you want to do. And there's no really set build order or strategy for the most part. Um, those are typically your lower level players. But for the, the the ability to click on somebody's stream and view what they're doing on the fly in real time without scouting them, that was a big problem. So now in League, for example, you have um, uh, a, basically a delay timer. So if you have somebody spectating the match, uh, they're delayed by almost two to five minutes mm -hmm. like for the entire match uh, before you can even v physically see what's going on in a stream. What Justin TV, uh, Twitch TV started doing was delaying their streams as well. Uh, a much larger amount so that what you're seeing isn't really live anymore. The chances of seeing anything live any nowadays is almost slim to none for that same reason. Um, unless they're in a controlled environment. But I hope Guild Wars 2 considers that. Um, it's, uh, It'd be nice if the spectator function had a built-in yeah. one-minute delay or something like that. And then they're they're going to have that. to. I don't think they've thought about that yet. I hope they have. And if they're listening to this, then they're definitely going to be adding it soon. But <laughs> as of right now in Guild Wars 2, the, the quote-unquote unreleased spectator um, is, uh, you know, if they don't add a delay function of some sort on that, you're going to have that problem there until they fix it. Definitely. So... I, I think that's sort of the answer there. I, I, I think classes are easily the things that should just be visible to, to all sides at the beginning of a match. Just to give you sort of a general feel, because classes can be so specialized in any different direction that you want, it seems to me that that, that doesn't tell you all that much. It tells you, okay, this guy's going to have a pet, or this guy is going to have some some mirrors, but is he a support mesmer? Is he, you know, full DPS? He's got all these traits that make his shatters do extra damage and things like that. I don't know. So um, I guess the last thing that we might want to cover today, um, <laughs> beta testing our patients. <laughs> Uh, what do you guys think of all of these threads <laughs> popping up that just seem like they listened to my rant last week and disagreed with me completely or something? Because, <laughs> oh, man, it's th th there was Br so Bridger, much. anybody that says that you can't be in beta <laughs> is on your rant list, so... <laughs> <sighs> Bridger didn't get an invite, so let's create a thread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So... It's just a ton of, to the point where the devs had to come out and respond and say, listen, people, calm down. What are you talking about? We're releasing a beta to the press. Like, why is that bad? Why are you crucifying ArenaNet for releasing a beta to the press? There's all kinds of people on there throwing huge numbers of arguments onto the fire and saying, oh, well... It's not fair that you give it to people that aren't real fans. The real fans deserve it. When what they're really trying to say is, I want it. Why can't I have it? They're saying that, oh, well, if real fans got it, then I would be happy. But no, they just come up with a new argument to say, well, the dedicated fans already know everything about the game. You should give the game to me because I don't know enough about the game yet. And I'll tell all my friends. It's just like. Oh, excuse after excuse. If you ask me, I don't think ArenaNet should have responded to that. I mean, that was just like buckling under pressure. Because, come on. I mean, you're, that, this happens in every game launch ever. And it always ends up...
developers always buckle down to these trolls that are complaining just to complain because again nothing to talk about right now yeah it, it's they shouldn't have said anything but now that they have it it just stirred more debate <laughs> so now, so now this thread because the arena net and I, I read the thread and it's very very long um and it's because now closed, it's a, by the way. Don't exactly. go to it. <laughs> point, point given. It, now that the ArenaNet employee uh, has you know, buckled down, it's like, I can't take it anymore, and replies, right? Yeah. It, immediately, you get a swarm of, of uh, let me choose my words carefully here, children. <laughs> who, who, uh, let me choose my words carefully so I won't <laughs> offend anyone. You're all <laughs> <old> babies. <laughs> <laughs> Who jump in on the thread like piranhas, you know, bashing ArenaNet for this and this and this. And these are the same people who, as soon as they exit the thread, will tell all of their friends about how awesome Guild Wars 2 is. So, uh, it drives yeah. me insane. You know, I kind of I kind of like that ArenaNet responded or said something. But I, I mean, mean, what they said it it may it may have it, I mean it it may have made their position worse by more people kind of you know responding and everything. But the fact that they're reading the forums and sort of like. You know, yeah, we we feel your pain. You know, we're going to respond. I think I I kind of like it in that sense. Um, but I mean, people. I mean, this is always going to happen. Whenever a game's released, there's going to be a beta, and there's going to be people that are complaining about not getting in the beta. And now, it's just the way the world works. To some extent, what you have here on Arena Net side, and I'm not blaming them, but this problem slightly could have been avoided um, if they had been slightly more clear because what, what you had here was ArenaNet said A and everybody who's a fan of the game goes, oh man, B! B, 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 B! And then ArenaNet puts A out and they're like, WTF, where's B? You said B! And ArenaNet's like, A? We said A. <laughs> so it's, it's a failed expectation. They left their description of what was going to happen here a little too vague and everybody just assumed oh this means we're gonna get live streams from all the press people this means we're gonna see total biscuit going through the thing and it's gonna be just like as if we were in the beta and then they say oh yep yeah, well NDA is gonna lift on the 20th and then you might see some stuff and everybody's like rage my threads my scenes and so again it's just a, it's just an expectation thing they never promised that the February press event would be without an NDA a non-disclosure agreement, and they never promised they for never, an open beta they, either. Yeah, and they, so. and they also yeah they never said everyone would ever get to play the game before it came out. Right, they never said that ever. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's not all it's it, like I said it's not really their fault because people will hear what they want to hear no matter what you say. But uh, I think what what Eric did say here is is it was simple and to the point, and he's he's trying to say listen, there's a lot of media involved in this event and a lot of people who aren't media. There's there's more than just friends and family. There are real fans playing the game. We know for a fact that there are a number of high-level Guild Wars 1 people that have been in the closed beta since December, and they're not allowed to talk about it, and that's why we don't hear about it. But we know that ArenaNet reached out to and talked to specific members of the Guild Wars 1 community and getting their feedback. So the argument of, well, if you only have friends and family, they're not real gamers, they won't give you real feedback, just falls flat when you hear that. But people don't want to hear that because they want to bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. And that shuts I mean, down bitching. The ones I mean, who are probably bitching the most are probably the worst people to have in beta. Agreed. Because like they're gonna be like, yeah. oh, this is broken. I hate it. Just <laughs> remove it. <laughs> like, what? It's not feedback. It's just like your angry emotions. That's like that's like the angry German kid. Did you ever see that video of the oh, German God. kid he smashing his the keyboard? keyboard? That's like yeah. that would not be a good tester for Guild Wars Two. <laughs> 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 All right, I think uh, we're gonna wrap it up. I guess uh, we're. I, I'm surprised we managed to stretch it as far as we did. We're probably past the halftime show. That's good news. So we'll let everybody um, get back to uh, to the game. I guess Super Who, uh, Bowl. Yep. Anybody know what the what the score is? What's the score in chat? Somebody let us know. We can let everybody else watching the stream know so that they can take interest. So so lesson of the week, all of you tales watchers. Um, don't be that guy. <laughs> That's good advice. Exactly. <laughs> don't don't be that guy. Don't complain just because there's no information or there's nothing else to complain about. Talk about legitimate concerns about structured spectator mode or you know. 
want so, to talk about. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> the freelancer stuff. No, uh, just yeah, don't don't be that guy. I think it's exciting enough that they've already sort of said that there's going to be beta weekends coming, you know, March and April and stuff like that. It, well, it's at the very least, if ArenaNet wants to be the community leader and they want to respond to these posts, don't give them reasons to avoid the posts from now on, you know? Because now it's like, they, they said that one little tidbit, you got your little morsel of information, you ripped it apart, and now ArenaNet's smashing their head on the keyboard. Why did I do that? So... Yeah, so the more people complain and, and take things that don't have any factual basis, the more ArenaNet's going to say, you know what, fine, we're not going to release any more answers or comments like that. And you don't want that. You want ArenaNet to say more stuff. So Exactly. you got to be more like us, I think, is the... It'll be the 20th before we all know it. it. Yeah, totally will be. I mean, the time has been flying so far anyway. We're We're getting closer and closer. It's... It's coming soon, guys. It's small steps now. It's like it's it's gonna be like one little thing after another, and I feel it's just gonna eventually get become like an avalanche until we hit like a, a the first beta weekend or the second beta weekend or whatever. Oh, I don't think I think it's uh, I, think I don't know. I think they'll give out some pretty decent information before the whole NDA gets lifted. I think they'd rather give out a little bit of information before everything starts getting reviewed by people they can't control what they're saying. Yep. So All I right. mean, it may not be it may not be big things. So it'll be you know a little bit. So so the next drama is going to be one of those press press members having their information and their videos leaked before the twentieth. <laughs> you just <laughs> wait and see. Oh man, that's going to happen. <laughs> Freelancer in before it actually happened. You hear it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. With that, I will leave you with this. Let's let's flip on over. There we go. Have a good one, everybody. And if, you, if, you're, if you're not watching, if you're listening, you can see this on the uh, show notes. It's worth checking out. This is the comic I was talking about. It's a good time. For everybody else, I'm Bridger. Have a good night. See you, Bye, guys. everyone. <laughs>